Okay, few people are coming, so I'm just waiting. So for uh, Audrey and those already here, uh, so my name is Geraldine Perriguet. I'm the founder, uh, co-founder of uh, XR Pedagogy. And here is uh, Ekaterina Semyuk. I'm sorry about the pronunciation. <laughs> hey, it's all right. <laughs> so, Hello, everyone. Yes, uh, we have a huge uh, time difference, but that's okay. We're so happy to share, uh, well, our work. And, and uh, because Katrina is in Moscow and I'm in uh, the other part of uh, the world, uh, in the Caribbean Sea. So it was tricky. To <laughs> Beautiful organize. technology. <laughs> yeah, but Era. amazing technology, and that is all great. So I would like to introduce a little bit uh, about you, uh, Katrina, and uh, who you are. So uh, you're a language teacher, and yeah, you have a strong background in uh, foreign philology. Uh, which mm -hmm, means the history right. and development of language. That's, that's amazing. Uh, you, at once, I learned that you were learning eight languages at the same time. That's, that's also pretty impressive. <laughs> so I've got a master degree in uh, TESOL in Australia, and you also work as a teacher in Sydney. And uh, you also are a teacher and a tutor for a private elementary school in the Moscow region. And your students mm -hmm. are between uh, five and ten years old. And some of them yep. have uh, dyslexia. So, uh, Katrina, is, she's also the co team leader of the Educators in VR uh, V language track. So, Educators in VR is a great community and uh, uh, Katrina is working with them to, on the language part. So that, please uh, have a look on their Facebook page and all the, their events in VR uh, and other platforms like Outspace VR. Uh, so you, uh, we can say a pioneer, you are a pioneer in uh, teaching in <laughs> VR. I would say teaching uh, languages in VR is quite uh, impressive for that. And so in this event, we will present uh, how Katrina used the platform Mozilla Hub mainly. And Mozilla Hub is a very interesting platform because uh, it's, it's a VR chat room sort of, but it's designed for every headset and browser. So if you have an headset, a VR headset, or if you are coming from your computer, well, whatever, whatever the device, uh, this platform is working and you can come and join together at the same place. So Katrina, take advantage uh, of this platform, Mozilla Hubs, which is a free platform uh, to start teaching English. And today she's going to tell us uh, her story and uh, her experience uh, behind that. So welcome, Katrina. And welcome Thank uh, you so also much. Uh, all the new participant, Christy from Canada. And uh, welcome, Christy, OB. <laughs> Hi, Christy. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yay. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Geraldine, for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Um, and thanks, everyone who joined us today. Uh, let me change my screen and demonstrate my slides. And Good. So for the audience, if you have questions, please send us uh, your comments, uh, your questions, and I will uh, tell that to Katrina. And so we have a little Q&A session. So she's, she's made a presentation and then we have a few questions okay. at, by the end. But in case you want to ask questions during uh, a presentation, and, and try to let her know uh, your question. So. Okay, it's getting big. <laughs> All right, then. Perfect. Because, um, that's perfect. So, yeah, that's, that's me. And um, so I would like to tell a little bit about my um, own learning experiences. Uh, so I started learning English at the age of seven at school and also French at the age of 14 also at school. 
um, other foreign languages I studied at university and uh, afterwards. Uh, the classes I had were mostly teacher-centered, so it means that uh, the teacher speaks most of the time during the lesson, and um, the teacher explains um, some theory and asks you comprehension questions. Uh, we were working with uh, textbooks uh, most of the time, and uh, we were practicing all aspects like uh, grammar, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Uh, at school, sometimes we had to memorize dialogues and exam topics. Uh, the main approach was grammar translation. It, it means that um, it's when you learn and uh, practice grammar by translating sentences between the target language and the native language. Um, all in all, we had not enough of pair and group work and not enough of meaningful uh, speaking practice. So also outside of the classroom, I used English um, playing video games, uh, reading, watching vlogs and listening to music, but I still wasn't speaking English a lot and uh, I had a huge lack of fluency. So, um, Sorry to interrupt, a maybe, but uh, I think that's the case for many countries where now it's, it's crucial for uh, people who are not native in English to speak English. That's uh, how it allows everyone to, to speak together. And uh, I think it's the same for, for my country where I, I learned English. It was a lack of fluency as well. Uh, even if I studied English for a long time. And uh, I think you're totally right that it's, it's quite difficult to... Uh, to be able to be fluent by the end of uh, the study, even though uh, we have great uh, lessons and teaching, so. And you didn't feel like you were flexible with the language, right? Yes, I didn't feel I would be able to engage a conversation. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's, it's only where I when I start to study in, in Scotland and live there, and, and, and I have to communicate to be able to to do everything in life, <laughs> just like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. work or uh, homework or just uh, go shopping, then I, I had to find a way to communicate. But otherwise, it was just like a, some something theoretical. That's right, yes, <laughs> the same. <laughs> so um, also like exciting and beneficial lessons, is it just a dream? Um, having an understanding of effective and ineffective teaching strategies and uh, tools and methods, um, it helped me with uh, teaching my students. Uh, I want to share my good learning experiences with them and find the ways to improve the better ones. Um, so, uh, like every teacher, I'm dreaming about making my lessons um, exciting and beneficial. Uh, that's the reason why I'm always looking for new ways of teaching and learning, trying to develop or adapt new strategies and new tools. Um, but in terms of exotic technologies, uh, two years ago, uh, I could only dream about applying it in my teaching. Of course, I heard that some companies and some universities were using it for their teaching and training, uh, but I had, I thought that it's it had nothing to do with uh, my teaching, like at elementary school. <laughs> um, uh, I didn't hear about many educational VR platforms and applications at that time, and I didn't even have a powerful headset. So luckily, progress doesn't stand still and XR technologies are becoming more affordable each year. So headsets are getting cheaper, uh, they're becoming more comfortable and more educational applications and experiences appear. Um, so I bought my Oculus Quest headset last autumn. Um, I wanted to finally try this new technology I'd been dreaming about for such a long time. Uh, mainly, I wanted to use it for video gaming <laughs> and uh, some other fun experiences. Uh, so at that moment, I heard about only one um, VR social platform that was called VR Chat. I saw lots of YouTube videos about it and I found it to be pretty crazy place 
uh, too much <laughs> for me. <laughs> it, it was it felt um, too uncomfortable for me to go there and to be there. So I decided to avoid it to save my nose, maybe. Um, also, I heard about Engage platform. Um, for me, it was a great tool for creating vivid VR lectures. Um, but I thought that it was uh, the best tool for uh, university school students or well, university school <laughs> university students um, because it looks so serious and you you could make these huge interactive uh, lectures. Yes, um, I think I'm just going to explain for those who might not be really familiar with these platforms. So when you mm -hmm. start to have uh, your first uh, VR headset, you figure out pretty quickly that most of the headsets which are affordable, let's say like a good uh, quality, uh, you can start with like like the Quest, Mozilla, uh, the Facebook Oculus Quest VR headset. When you start to buy your first headset, uh, then you, you uh, discover that there are lots of game. So if you want to consider using it to teach, you are facing uh, some kind of problem because you figure out okay that's that's very nice for playing but what i'm going to do with that in the school and i think in your situation as well uh, no one was uh, none of the other teacher or not, no one in the school were uh, actually mm -hmm. using this technology and they didn't have uh, neither the vr headset so I really like your the way you you start this this journey <laughs> to teaching VR uh, because it was very experimental and say okay I like this technology I like to play with this technology how can I uh, actually use it uh, to to teach and so there are different platforms to meet people in VR and so the one you mentioned is Engage and there are also Outspace VR and other platform and. This is where you can meet people and you can also invite students. So you say uh, what you were saying about engage. So I like you continue. Uh, recently, by the way, I tried to find um, like let's say all all of the um, social via yeah, platforms, and I stopped at the number of around nineteen for yes. now. So I was like, no way. So it's exactly uh, the same at the beginning of social network uh, in computer uh, where it, it starts to work well for one or two social networks and a lot starting to be created. And we see the same uh, in VR. There are lots of different platforms with different application, possible applications, different uh, requirements in terms of uh, the power of the VR headset. So, um, but um, talking about engage now, I realize that I might be wrong about it. I mean, uh, trying to apply it to elementary school children, uh, because from my perspective now, it never hurts to give a new tool a go and to try to adapt it to your student's age. Mm -hmm. So, like, just try. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> you lose nothing, basically. So yes. Um, and here we have the next slide. <laughs> um, the previous school year, I worked as an English teacher and tutor at one private elementary school in the Moscow region. Um, after our school had gone online uh, during the pandemic, I had more time, uh, more free time that I decided to spend on getting the rust of my advanced English speaking skills. Um, I mean that every time you interact with small children in a foreign language, uh, you never get deep dialogues on complicated topics. So, and if you don't use advanced vocabulary and grammar, uh, most of the time in your speech, you start losing it. So I decided to fix it and uh, go into a VR social platform to find some random people I could chat with. And this is how we met, and by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, yeah, we actually so the true. first time uh, we've met in the VR, and we, we uh, Katrina wanted to to 
to teach uh, English in VR and uh, I was uh, trying to find a teacher who were interested in teaching in VR. <laughs> so it was a very fortunate meeting uh, in, uh, in this kind of VR platform. So if yes, you are in the audience, can... please, uh, and if you have a VR headset, it would be great for you to uh, go uh, in virtual reality, meet some teachers and, and also meet some other people just to get to feel uh, how is it and how great it is. Mm -hmm. So true, yes. <laughs> so that's how um, I found Altspace. Um, it came to me as a surprise that this platform had lots of different events and classes going on there. So there I found um, Michael's English conversation classes. Um, you can see it, the left bottom shot. <laughs> um, I'm talking about Michael McDonald from Gold Lotus. He is also the co-leader of the language track of the education educators in VR. Um, sorry. <laughs> yes. well, Gold so, Lotus, uh, for information, well, uh, Michael McDonald uh, is, is a founder of Gold Lotus and uh, is a, as well a uh, teacher who is teaching English in virtual reality. Uh, we'll try uh, as well to, to invite uh, him uh, later on, <laughs> but uh, yeah. maybe in India <laughs> as well. And uh, it's it's uh, very amazing uh, his work. And uh, so I, I'm just going to write down uh, the name uh, so people sure. can can have a look because I think it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, a yeah, great, he has uh, really lots of things to tell you. So yes, exactly. And. Uh, that's the person who told me about his VR teaching experiences and about other social platforms uh, that could be used for English teaching, like Mozilla Hubs and Rumi. Um, I decided to try these platforms with my eldest group of students of 10 year old. Uh, I was planning to use Altspace, Mozilla and Rumi, but um, one of my students had only an iPad to use. Um, so Altspace had no mobile version at that time and uh, Rumi had no iOS version. So the only option left was Mozilla, luckily, um, and we went for that. Um, the pandemic time became a catalyst of digital literacy development for many students around the world. <laughs> I had lots of stories <laughs> and most of my students had no idea how to use a computer, a laptop or a mouse. So yes, um, and usually if you want to get the best out of any new educational tool, um, uh, you and your students have to feel super comfortable using it. So, yeah, uh, knowing that I decided to spend a couple of first lessons. No, no, <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. So, and because of that, I decided to spend a couple of um, first lessons just uh, for my students to get used to this new technology. Uh, I started with the whole basics. Um, I introduced... Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, you, you totally right no, no, the no, fact no, that no, you have to uh, uh, start a little bit uh, your technology wherever you want to introduce as a new technology tool. You need to be comfortable with it. You need to make sure that all the students can access, and then you need that to make sure that uh, even the students are will be comfortable with that. So. It's, it's a lot of barriers uh, for, for a technology that is brand new and not always uh, easy to handle in, in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I mean that uh, because I wanted my students to feel comfortable with the new technology, I decided to put um, the language learning uh, a, a bit aside, like at the second place, and uh, be sure that, first of all, they need to know how to use the technology and after that we can move and use it at its whole potential so yes um, and for how long uh, how many lessons uh, did you let the student discover the technology before uh, even trying to teach anything with like uh, how many lessons uh... like around two lessons i guess 
So the first, the first lesson was yeah. like, yeah, for sure, like nothing to do with English. Well, I tried to speak English, but um, I had to use the Russian a lot because I had to explain lots of stuff uh, um, concerning the technology use usage. And uh, yeah, like the second, the third lesson, the half, the second half of the second lesson, something like that. All in all, I had around five lessons in Mozilla. So, okay. yeah, so, so take your time. Don't worry. You that's give your students time. That's very important feedback, I think. Like, yeah. if you want to try this technology, it, it's, uh, it's important to consider that uh, the few first lessons, depending on the age and how your uh, students are comfortable with technology in general, but you need to consider that the first few lessons uh, will be just dedicated to discovering the tool. And then you can start. Uh, you can start differently. But then, because it's in a full virtual environment, they can. Uh, and, and this is what I found amazing with teaching English in VR is because once you arrive in this virtual environment, you can decide like, okay, from now on in this environment, we're going to try to speak in English. It's like we are in a sort of English speaking land, virtual English speaking land. And I really like this and I've got uh, feedbacks from different uh, teachers who are speaking languages in VR about that because it's not easy in the classroom to say, okay, now we are in the English classroom, let's all speak English. And yeah. then, <laughs> but when you're in a VR it's using your VR headset or when you access to Mozilla platform with your computer, you write this, this virtual environment, you are uh, represented by an avatar and now you can say, okay, mm -hmm. now I'm in a different world. <laughs> And this is really amazing. That's true, yes. That's a very nice strategy. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and yeah, I had to explain the whole basics, like what is a browser? Where do you find it? Like how to type? Uh, where is the search bar? How to... Boom, and then how to connect and use avatar, like everything. And also knowing that uh, kids go crazy every time they are super excited about something new, uh, I decided to avoid uh, complete chaos <laughs> by letting them test all the features gradually. Um, as the host of the created scene, um, uh, I had the right to block or allow um, various actions of my guests, of my students. Uh, for example, to draw or to show emojis or to create and move objects or to um, create cameras. Uh, and at the first lesson, they could speak and walk around. Basically, they were getting used to the environment uh, to, and to others' avatars. <laughs> I could bring them objects and teleport all of us into other worlds. So it was enough for them <laughs> for the first lesson because they still um, could go crazy. And it's very important um, as well. I don't know if you are going to mention it later on. I'm sorry if so, but in Mozilla, you can share your screen. So as a teacher avatar, you can decide, okay, uh, I'm going to share my screen. So people can see your avatar and so see your, your face or uh, something you would like to, uh, to show like a presentation. So in case you want to show a tutorial or to remind where is it to do this or that, you can speak mm -hmm. to them, but you can also show them something uh, to explain in case they're lost. Because uh, Katrina did this uh, lessons uh, in, a, in a distance learning uh, way. So you were not yes. next to the student and that's uh, super impressive. So it was in VR, <laughs> in distance uh, learning and, and for the first time for them, <laughs> And while they were not used to the, the technology in general and with, uh, with students from different places. So you have to imagine, okay, Catherine, how brave you are <laughs> because you say, okay, I'm going to start now a teaching lesson or I'm going to start a course where my student won't be here and I'm going to start with a new technology. They have no idea what it is and how to use it. And I'm be the one who helping them. <laughs> Plus okay. the alphabet is different in Russian. So I think it's quite a challenge. And sharing your screen is a great way, I agree with you, to uh, show uh, your student um, how to do something, avoiding using your native language. So like, yes, oh, <laughs> that's <nice>. the way. <laughs> yes. Um, 
In the next lesson, I allowed them to draw with their pens and I explained them how to do it. Uh, the lesson after that, uh, I let them bring their own objects into the world and move or pin them. Um, so I can explain that um, in Mozilla, you create a space, uh, you can create a room or maybe go to another scene or it's also can be called a world. Uh, like a castle world and you can go there and also being inside this space you can bring other objects into this space like a hamburger an ice cream whatever a cat and you can move it around you can put it whatever you want you can uh, change the size of it or you can rotate it and you can pin it so others can't move it accidentally so yes that's and this is all free <laughs> Which is amazing. <laughs> I mean, you don't need to to uh, register for any license or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. can start this experiment in VR. Uh, so you were uh, you were wearing your VR headsets when you were teaching, mm -hmm. and your yes, students um, will access through their iPad or their computer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, only the last lesson. Uh, I I was trying to use Rumi and then I couldn't and uh, I decided to use my 2D mode in Mozilla so not to lose more time. <laughs> but yeah, the other lessons I were in my uh, headset. Um, Do yeah. you have maybe uh, some so picture of Mozilla and we can show them uh, for those who doesn't know how it looks like? I don't know if you have uh, the environment. In the in your presentation, um, the previous slides, yeah, this one, the right, um, at the right button, uh, the picture. So it's Mozilla. Oh, that's very nice. Uh, so we see the the student. Let me show it again. So yeah, like it, to this bold is farm. like a. Yeah, and yeah. you can see my student. <laughs> uh, you can see me <laughs> over there in my headset. You can uh -huh. see two of my students with me, and he, uh, one of my students' avatar very colorful one <laughs> yes that's the and, tricky part because when you wear a vr headset and then you share your screen then you show your student mm -hmm. you with a vr headset basically and it, you can see this bar with some uh, features so you can draw something you can mute yourself or unmute you can bring objects or you can share your screen so i was talking about these features i can allow or i can block for my students <laughs> and also this left picture is also you can see me <laughs> with my headset and uh, two of my students they're walking around and i brought them a kitchen <laughs> and they are looking at it so yes okay um so the idea was uh, to gradually present every feature to narrow narrow their fo focus down and save a bit of my nerves. <laughs> so yes, um, because when kids are excited, they are overwhelmed with their emotions and um, they are hardly controlled. So it's very important to give them enough time to play around um, with every feature, let them do whatever they want um, with it uh, until they get calmer and you can start to work with them. Uh, yes, okay. Um, no activities, what can you do in Mozilla Hubs? So um, most, let's say mostly everything. <laughs> it's up to your imagination and the way you adapt the activity to the VR environment. Uh, my VR lessons, they were 90% um, improvised. Uh, the whole Mozilla Hubs experiment was super spontaneous um, in my case. Uh, I had just a couple of things prepared. Um, I you decided are, to do one question. day. Yeah, I was like, okay, tomorrow or never. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> well, that's very brave because you were in distance. So it's not so easy uh, to actually set up everything. Can I ask you a question? How did actually the parents or the school react to your initiative? So like when you say, okay, I'd like to try this technology to teach English, how do they react? Was there like completely okay oh. with not asking any questions? So were there 
fearing anything? How did you overcome this this uh, situation regarding uh, the older get older? <laughs> In this, uh, my focus. school was always uh, very supportive uh, with such things with my experiments because it's not like the first time I uh, try something new because uh, before that uh, before the pandemic and quarantine um, I uh, used uh, a couple of uh, tablet games uh, for language learning with all of my kids. And I also, during the pandemic, I used an online video game that is called Scribble Notes. Maybe okay. you know it, where you have to um, do some quests with uh, typing different word words. And these words, they appear as an object and you can use this object to finish the quest and get some stars. So it's like, yeah, it's an nice. English learning thing. So. I said like okay, I'm going, and they like okay, go. Well, but some parents, are yes, used to you testing plenty of different uh, experience with technology. When we were in Mozilla, I had a funny story. So a parent came in and thought that her child was playing a video game instead of my lesson <laughs> and she was like oh my god what are you doing you have a lesson and then yes i had to explain that okay it's all right it's me i'm here it's the, a the lesson is here with lessons the can be engaging and fun yeah don't worry yes so it was like that so how did you uh, so you said you were spontaneous and the way you you start your first lesson in VR, but then um, were you planning on teaching some particular topic uh, regarding English? Or do you have to follow some sort of curriculum? How did you integrate uh, like your experience into a curriculum? Yeah, I had just a couple of uh, things prepared. So I checked all the world uh, I wanted to bring my kids into. Um, I tried them myself uh, and uh, also I thought about some activities I can use in this or that particular world like oh it would be nice to uh, walk around and for example write um, the names of the objects or maybe <laughs> like play hide and seek I don't know uh, and uh, um, like in the seen with a castle it would be nice to build something outside because you have lots of uh, um, spare um, <laughs> space um, like this yes and also uh, you could think about um, gr maybe some grammar points you can drill with your students but it's not a must um, I used um, dogma approach uh, so where you um, help your students uh, to get the vocabulary and grammar upon request. So if they need something, they want something to say, I help them with it. So um, because uh, when it's needed most, it's valued most. Uh, but. Uh, there are other strategies uh, when you can present vocabulary and grammar through VR. So you can bring your students and you can bring objects because it's really vivid and you can explain uh, some concepts uh, with the objects and it's engaging and more memorable. And uh, all the so objects all... you integrate in Mozilla are in 3D. So for those who don't know, it will be in, in three dimension. So if you want to uh, you know, upload a fox, for instance, the fox will be in 3D, so the, the children or the students will be able to walk around, will be able to look in front, mm -hmm. front whatever. Yeah. And I think yes. that helps as well if you want to explain a concept in a foreign language, to be able to see that object in 3D, it's something different than to watch a picture of the object and have someone telling you, well, this is on the back, and, and then you don't understand the word back. and and not here, you can actually turn the object, you can go on the back of the object and see the teacher showing you, okay, here is the tail, here is the head. Uh, I think it's very interesting to take advantage of, of uh, these 3D capabilities. Which are... mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can present uh, vocabulary and uh, maybe the next lesson you can 
uh, practice using it uh, with some activities maybe. Uh, also, you can use um, another strategy like um, you can pre-teach some particular vocabulary and grammar without using VR and then go into VR to practice it. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. If you, by the way, if your students are using VR headsets, so uh, there is a recommended time for various age groups. Um, for example, for small children, it uh, varies between five uh, to 20 minutes. So the shortest session you're gonna have with your students, uh, the better you have to think about how you're gonna spend this valuable time on what exact activities. Well, thank you for another very important feedback about the, the, the duration, like the time you want to dedicate to the VR lessons. It's very important. And uh, here, I, uh, in, in, uh, with all the team from, from XR Pedagogy, we are trying to build recommendation uh, according to the age of the child to say, OK, uh, how long should it be for younger children? How long should it be for uh, older and I think that's also very interesting with Mozilla because uh, younger students uh, it should be better at the beginning that they access to the virtual world via a computer and then when they get older mm -hmm. uh, around 13 years old then they will be able to uh, use the VR etc hopefully they if uh, they they can have one at school or at home and so it's it's also interesting to consider the, the access and to consider the time because when they are young you cannot require them to stay too long in the environment yes and that's why um, because uh, my students they were using 2d mode uh, i could spend the whole 40 minutes doing lots of stuff yes oh yeah there um so also i have half of it I can see but okay I'll tell you um, just an examples of activities uh, you can for example build something like a house and um, tell your students to call uh, the names of the objects they build their houses with or you can ask um, try to explain why did you use this or that object you can bring um, objects and use them in a sentence or you can for example prepare a dinner or you can draw a chess board and uh, bring some objects and play chess or checkers um, or you can play shopping and sell or buy some objects or write the names of the objects like walking around the um, house, for example, or around the room. Wow. Um, and you can play hide and seek or like warmer or colder. You can think about an object and the others have to guess <laughs> what object. Like, it's really about your yeah, imagination. And how so, long yes. does it Feel take free. Uh, for you to um, learn about Mozilla and how to use it before starting teaching it? How long does it take? I don't know. It wasn't really hard. No, you I mean, just how long, uh, connect. How, long, uh, how long did it take? Like, did you take uh, like a day to learn about Mozilla and so later on you'll be able to teach or was it uh, just a few hours? It's just for, for um, the teacher or listening to us who would like to consider using it to understand uh, that it is not a huge uh, investment to try and it is mm -hmm. not... Uh, that's complicated to get to know. Yes, you just connect and you see the bar and you try this and that and then it, and it takes like 20 minutes. I don't know. I can't say it can take a, a yeah, day was... or even an hour. You just try this and that and okay, okay, you can, I can do this. What if I try this? And then it was very fast. fast. Yeah. Okay. I've got a question from Audrey. Uh, what is the time limit in one Mozilla app session? I don't think there is a time. No, you as a host, you create the world and you can stay as much time as you need. And then you just close it and disconnect. That's it. Yeah. And the world is the whole... closed as well because you provide a code uh, and password. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, think. I don't know if you can explain it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so you create this vault, you connect uh, to it, and you send um, code to your students, and then they enter the code and they connect to the place where you are and that's it yes and then you close it and they everyone is disconnected and it's simple yes. so yeah it's pretty and um so maybe i don't know if uh, audrey we answer your question but uh, for in your um in your experience katrina uh, how long was the the session for instance uh, when you have a, a eight years old uh, or seven years old student how long uh, does the Mozilla session last? If it's 2D mode, you can spend like half an hour. So if like the student even 40 minutes, it depends. The thing okay. depends on the activities you're doing. Uh, yes, maybe it's something creative, and they spend lots of time just building something. So it's a uh, you need to give them time to do it. So like maybe 15 minutes to build something and then to do uh, some activities, I, I guess. Yes. But in a VR headset, it depends for eight years. Probably, you know, much, much better. I would recommend uh, never more than 20 minutes. If the students are uh, joining the platform with a VR headset, and if they are over 13 years old, nothing more than 20 minutes, which is far the limit. Yes. But uh, what is uh, usually or currently done is uh, something like five, 10 minutes when you are using a VR headset. Mm -hmm. And if the student uh, access this computer, then it's, it's really up to you. So uh, it's uh, 12 to 15 minutes left. <laughs> We're very uh, talkative, but I let okay. you keep on. Uh, Oh, it's my pretty much the last slide, by the way. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, I also wanted to add that um, such tools as Mozilla Hubs are also great creative tools. You can think about activities where your students can unleash their imagination <laughs> and create something on their own uh, in groups or in pairs uh, or use it with assessment projects, maybe like why not? Uh, it's really fun and interesting um, with creative tasks. You help your students to relax and raise positive emotions and memories. And as a consequence, all in all, positive attitude to the lessons and to, to the target language, or maybe to just your subjects. Maybe you are a chemistry teacher or a history teacher. And how does the and, student uh, react mm -hmm. uh, when the, you ask them to create something? Uh, so <laughs> they were like super happy about it. Yeah. I think this was um, it was uh, the thing they wanting to do the whole time to bring <laughs> objects and doing them stuff well. with them creating something building it like oh my god and they will was, and they yes. would explain it in english were they able to describe or to speak in english uh, the most yeah when i asked them like okay please now tell me something yeah they were super emotional they wanted to share everything of course in their native language and i well, yeah i had to bring them down and say like eh, eh. No. <laughs> tell something in English, in English, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, well, that's please, amazing yeah. that uh, what you mentioned about the positive emotion and memories. Yes, yeah. I think that's the whole yeah. point. Like to put them in a in this kind of comfortable emotion, comfortable sensation that is different sometimes. That what they may feel as pressure, or not all the time, of course. I'm sure that that you yeah. also <laughs> a very very good uh, teacher that that bring good ex uh, emotion. But for those who might not feel comfortable with English, uh, might not feel comfortable with this uh, different way of speaking. Uh, it's it's a new way to bring that positive emotion. Mm -hmm. Yes, and talking about my students, um, for them the target language became, well, sometimes <laughs> a tool for sharing experiences and information, um, like in another way of communication. Um, and the whole practice, it didn't look like a task or an exercise. Um, and they were always exciting to go to Mozilla and they were asking me like, are we going to Mozilla Hubs? <laughs> it was a positive experience for all of us, yes. So, so uh, did you try to uh, measure something? Did you, uh, even if it's uh, qualitative, but uh, like a, 
how was it uh, how was it uh, before with other uh, way of teaching and how was it uh, how was can you talk about the results you you get Not uh, really, because it was spontaneous. So, um, and it was a short session, so only five lessons. I couldn't say um, much about um, how many new words or like uh, they learned or something about the super grammar development. But for sure, I can say that uh, they were really positive about the lessons, about um, activities. Uh, the same way I did before the pandemic when we played tabletop games in English. They never say anything in Russian. They used English because they wanted to win. <laughs> And it, it was amazing. Uh, it's something the same. Yes, it helped as well the memories because uh, it will remind them experience. Uh, they will memorize experience in English experience. They have this this 3D object experience they have with the teacher mm -hmm. there in these platforms, and you write it here uh, on your presentation. The most yes, yeah, the most senses they use, uh, the better they remember mm -hmm. everything. Okay, <laughs> that's it. it. Is pretty that pretty much it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank so. you. Uh, okay, questions? I'm gonna go through the, the question uh, if there are so. So, thank you for those who participate and uh, comment a little bit. So, uh, okay, we, we have a person from Canada and another person, uh, uh, Audrey from Saudi. Uh, so, Pierre uh, is asking uh, what do you think could be uh, improved in, in Mozilla Hub in terms of uh, the, the teaching? What features should be had according to you and your experience of teaching English uh, with uh, Mozilla? With Mozilla? Uh, <laughs> as a video <laughs> game, as a gamer and a game based um, fan, uh, I would love to have. Uh, various maybe quests or games uh, I can use with my students, like playing Uno. Well, basically the same things I could do before the pandemic. So playing tabletop games, um, maybe yeah, some other games, uh, game some interactive things. Yes. I would love to see there. Yes. Yes, they already um, made some sort of little uh, modules or little. Uh, already made games that you could integrate straight in, in Mozilla. That's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, very that's interesting. Right, yeah. Yeah. Gamification is amazing as well as a vector of uh, memories or uh, engagement in general. So, okay. Uh, so, do you have any more questions? I see if someone is uh, writing. I can uh, ask you something in the meantime. Um, so, for me, it would be. Uh, Are you going to keep on uh, teaching uh, using virtual reality? And so, what are yes, your, your projects then <laughs> for the for the next years and and, and the way you 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 just doing your jobs? And how did you plan to uh, to organize your your lesson next year? And are you continuing to, to work with VR? Um. I'm thinking about uh, maybe starting with Michael something like a speaking free speaking club in Allspace or maybe in another platform. Um, we'll see. So I, I would love to uh, do some free classes where I can um, get more experience and um, help people and see how it goes. So for these reasons, yes, maybe in January. Okay, and that was for adults. <laughs> I hope so. Yes. Okay. So the public next. public teaching, uh, well, like organize events uh, on those platforms, but this time, uh, like public events where all everyone can come and learn English, uh, adult and, and children as well. So for for mm -hmm. those listening, uh, she was mentioning um, uh, so. Go for Mac Michael McDonald from Gold Lotus, and so they are trying to organize. Michael is already yeah, uh, like this one organizing lots of platform. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, and Michael. also as a teacher, it's very interesting to come to one of these lessons and to see how it is, like, like mm -hmm. putting yeah. yourself and to ask any teacher. questions and share your experiences. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so, so uh, more. Uh, 
more relaxed about trying that. And would you have an advice for a teacher as well that would like to start VR in this course? Yes, <laughs> like uh, try it. If you have a chance, just try it and you will see um, how it goes. How do you feel? How do your students feel? So just go for it. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> you can do it. It never hurts. Okay, yes. I never had problems. Yeah. And Audrey, uh, thank you, Audrey, for, for your comments. She say this is something new uh, for her as a teacher and very useful for teaching uh, her student. Uh, is in, in Saudi, where the student, especially in Saudi, where the students are unlikely to speak or interact using English. Uh, she thank you, Katrina. And, thank uh, you so much, and She said she'll, she'll try Mozilla in, in her class. So. Thank you, uh, Audrey, for your comments. And, and we are here at XR Pedagogy and, and Katrina as well. Uh, if you'd like to have advice or if you uh, have any um, technical questions, uh, we'll be happy to help you. And um, we will uh, try to, if you're interested, to build some sort of uh, a short tutorial uh, on Mozilla uh, for a teacher who would like to know the basics. So, or if you're interested in that, just uh, you can send me an email uh, and I'm going to write down my email. And maybe, Katrina, you can as well show your first slide whether it's uh, your email. So people would like mm -hmm. to ask you questions. Here you go. Uh, I'm writing the email as well. So you can send a message through the website of XR Pedagogy. And if you would like to also uh, have more information or to know more about a tutorial to use Mozilla, we are going to build one. So we'll be happy to have your questions. And, uh, and also, um, we'll, be, uh, we'll be very happy uh, to uh, indicate your question to Katrina in case uh, we can mm -hmm. answer it. So, and um, Michael and I are going to create an event on the 16th of December. Uh, it will be on Engage platform and we'll be showing features and all the tools we'll be talking about uh, tools and features of Engage that you can use uh, for teaching languages and we'll be demonstrating them. So you can also come and have a look at this one yes. here. To access Feel Engage, to can we access it via a computer as well? Yes, it's possible. You can uh, mm -hmm. uh, you yeah, create Engage. Uh, I'm just going to write it down here. There you go. Engage. So Engage is another platform as Mozilla. It requires um, a little bit uh, more powerful equipment, I would say, because it's mm -hmm. quite uh, mm -hmm. uh, demanding. But if you have a, a computer like for gaming and if you have a headset uh, like uh, Oculus Quest 2 or, or any uh, HTC, some, some headset like this that are connected to computer, you can access to engage and try it or you can watch some, uh, some video as well but to see how is it in engage. So we will as well mm -hmm. try to show how is it like uh, you can uh, follow us on our YouTube channel. We already made a little uh, demonstration about Space VR. And we are uh, continuing that with uh, with my team, but I think yes, just go to an event uh, if you can have the equipment, the computer, or the headset, the VR headset. Go to an event, meet these people, and and get to know how is it. Because then you will feel very confident and sure that you want to bring your student there. <laughs> I'm sure. So yes. the event is yeah, in 16. You say download it and install. Yeah. Mozilla is like the simplest because it's um, you don't need to install it. You just open the browser and you just use it. <laughs> Have a go. Yeah. And uh, how was it to explain to your student to do it? Uh, because uh, I don't know if uh, Mozilla is totally translated in uh, in all alphabets. How is it? Because I'm thinking. Because... Mm, no, it was in English, and yeah, I decided not to explain it uh, via. Um, written chat. I just okay. told them to join my Zoom room okay. and we went and I explained them every step like, okay, open your browser and then what is browser? <laughs> and then, okay, it's <laughs> look for this icon and click it. And so, yes. So you didn't need the parents to help as well. That's very important to know. 
basically mm-hmm. you're just you mm-hmm. on your own with your student and as long as the students are connected to the computer and to a zoom uh, they, you you'll be able to help them parents were also pretty busy because it was a quarantine they were um working from home so yeah yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, the experience of all the teacher that that has to to teach two students uh, uh, when they were at home and they, they couldn't get any help with technology and and from parents neither. So it was like, uh, okay, I'm going to try. Yeah. No. And also, I, I had like the youngest children, so <laughs> the better technology goes to the to parents then to elder brothers or sisters and yes. then the rest like uh, ipads and phones go to elementary school <laughs> <laughs> it was not and so mozilla helped a lot like yes and you also have a community in mozilla so once you um like I just check the website i i put in a in the Facebook event, in the chat, uh, when you access to the website, you see that there is a community, so you can click on community, and then you arrive uh, in Discord, which is a, a chat platform, and you can speak with other person uh, who are already using who are using uh, Mozilla and ask them their question as well. So, in case you don't know how to do and you don't know how to to test, uh, you can actually ask them as well uh, directly in Mozilla and uh, very it's a very nice community and I know uh, that uh, many teachers are, are there as well to to discuss what they're doing everywhere in the world <laughs> so that's pretty amazing so Audrey uh, please uh, send us some feedback about your test uh, of Mozilla in VR uh, in Saudi that would be amazing and uh, we're very happy that uh, we are helping each other all over the world uh, for students so I'm, I'm Super happy about that. So it's uh, it's time to finish. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Katrina, and for sharing your experience and uh, and your courage because it's not easy to to try new experience when you are in a context <laughs> which is already quite new oh, oh for God. everyone. Oh, going. So <laughs> thank you so much. And uh, if you want to speak to her or meet her, she's uh, quite often in in art space in the different. Uh, uh, educators in VR events. So please uh, join us. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you and so much for having me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Thanks welcome. everyone who joined and uh, asked questions and supported. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for everyone. Uh, thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Audrey. Uh, thank you as well, Christy, and um, well, thank you for all those who will be uh, watching the replay as well uh, on, in, our, in our channel, and uh, I will share the, the link later on. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you so much. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.